Hi everyone! My name is Samuel Briggs. I'm a local singer here with Tulsa Opera, and I'm so delighted to be with you this afternoon. I thought we could read one of my favorite all-time storybooks, The Mouse of the Opera by Tula Pere. It follows the adventures of a little mouse named Maurice as he scurries and travels through the opera house right next to his home. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. The Mouse of the Opera by Tula Pere. A mouse family had a comfortable life under a rose bush next to the opera house. In the evenings, the little ones would keenly watch the brightly lit building and the people rushing toward it. Hundreds of opera fans in shiny dress shoes clip-clopped along the pavement and slipped through the opera house's glass doors. I wish I could see inside the opera house, little Maurice said wistfully. Never in your dreams! The mother mouse exclaimed. It's far too dangerous. All those feet in hard shoes. Remember what happened to your cousin. Embarrassed, Maurice's cousin whisked his tail about, or the short stub that was left of it. The curious mouse had gotten it caught between the opera house doors on a daring expedition. Your mother is right, the cousin said. Forget about the opera house, Maurice. I will come up with a way to do it, the little mouse thought. But he knew he'd better not breathe a word about his scheme or plan to anyone. As the evening grew darker, Maurice climbed up to his favorite spot on a mossy rock. There he sat with twitching whiskers, admiring the opera house. It gleamed across the lawn like a giant lantern. The performance had just begun. The little mouse pricked up his ears. Music echoed from the depths of the house. The orchestra's many instruments combined into such beautiful harmony that Maurice could hardly breathe. At times, the singers' voices rose above the music. Some voices were deep and low, ah, while others were high and piercing. Ah! I must get inside the opera house, Maurice thought. I must see what's going on in there. Sitting in his lookout, Maurice patiently listened through the entire performance. At the end, the audience thanked the performers with applause, which the little mouse could faintly hear. It was time to make a move. Through the massive windows, Maurice could see people heading to the coat check room to get their coats. It's now or never, the little mouse encouraged himself. I don't have time to waste. The doors will open any second now. With his heart racing, Maurice scampered towards the tall doors. They reminded him of what had happened to his cousin's tail. He had to be very careful with his tail. The area near the front doors was a dangerous place to be. Maurice was blinded by the bright lights, but he could hear shoes clip-clopping frightfully all around him. The mouse froze too petrified to move. All of a sudden, the crowd moved aside, clearing the way to the doors. With his tail wiggling wildly, Maurice scurried through the main entrance. He darted across the lobby and sneaked behind the umbrella stand. The opera house had fallen silent. The old caretaker, Carrington, slowly walked past the coat racks to lock the doors. La donna immobile, the man sang, content. Wow, what a voice! He could perform in an opera. And Maurice marveled at the caretaker singing from his hiding place. What if I tried too? The little mouse tried to imitate the singing, but ended up squeaking instead. Caretaker Carrington had impeccable or very, very good hearing. He went right to the umbrella stand to capture Maurice, but the mouse made a run for it and scurried into the restaurant. Oh, never mind, Carrington sighed. It can wait until tomorrow. In the morning, I will set a trap for that rascal. Maurice let out his breath. Finally, the opera house was still, but luckily it was not completely dark. Dim night lights illuminated or lit up the empty restaurant it was one fascinating room. All sorts of alluring, enticing things had been left inside a glass pastry case. 
Maurice climbed along cardboard boxes, hanging towels, and cupboard doorknobs. Finally, he made it up to the pastry case. Besides crumbs, he found a real treasure, a chocolate pastry. The little mouse was so famished, he dug into his treat right away. After finishing half of the pastry, Maurice patted his round tummy. I won't starve here for sure, but now I need a proper nap to give me energy to explore every corner of the opera house tomorrow. After some searching, Maurice found a nice place to sleep inside a tea cozy. The mouse wrapped his tail around his legs and fell asleep in a heartbeat. The next morning, Maurice woke with a start when the cleaners and kitchen staff arrived. The peaceful restaurant was suddenly filled with commotion. Maurice almost had a heart attack when someone gripped the cozy and shook it forcefully. Eek! There's a mouse in the restaurant! A cleaning lady shrieked. Shoo! On your way! That grubby little creature has even visited the pastry case, a kitchen worker said. We will solve this problem by setting up a mouse trap. Maurice felt offended. He was not a grubby creature. Every night he cleaned himself carefully, the front paws and tail in particular. I will not listen to this nonsense any longer. Maurice snorted and decided to continue his tour around the big house. In the lobby, the little mouse saw a familiar figure. Caretaker Carrington was already there. Well, no one would make a better guide for a mouse visiting the opera for the first time. Maurice decided to follow the old caretaker from a safe distance. Oh, this should be interesting, Maurice thought. I wonder where he's going first. The twosome headed downstairs. At times, it seemed as if the man was aware of the mouse at his heels. At the end of a long corridor was a large room, which left the little mouse completely spellbound. It was the opera house's wardrobe or costume room. The walls were covered with pictures and designs of gorgeous dresses. Patterns and beautiful fabrics were laid out on the tables. People were working busily. Scissors crunched, sewing machines hummed, and needles glinted in the sunlight. Whoa! Maurice marveled at the colorful sight. This was nothing like the mouse family's dull den. When the caretaker stopped to have a chat with the wardrobe staff, Maurice scurried on top of the fabric rolls. The shelves were overflowing with velvet, silk, tulle, and who knows what else. The mouse had no clue what all those magnificent fabrics were called. Quickly, he made a cozy little nest out of shiny yarns and fluffy plumes. The sparkle from spangles and gemstones almost blinded the little mouse. He nuzzled against the smooth silk, resting for a while before it was time to resume the morning tour with the caretaker. In the long corridor, strange noises echoed from behind thick doors. Inside the rooms, opera singers and musicians were rehearsing. Instruments made squeaking and howling noises, while the people made shrieking and roaring noises. Maurice found some of the sounds quite pleasant, once he got used to them. A high-pitched female voice rose from behind one door. Maurice wanted to flee, but caretaker Carrington knocked on the door. Curiosity won over the little mouse, and he followed the caretaker inside the soprano's rehearsal room. May I disturb you for a moment? Carrington asked. Oh, why, of course, Clive! The glamorous soprano smiled so brightly her entire face glowed. You know you're my favorite caretaker. I've known you since I was born. I wouldn't be the star I am today if you had not encouraged me to sing long ago. Caretaker Carrington sat down to listen to the soprano rehearse. Maurice decided to find himself a seat, too. He just climbed onto the bench next to the accompanist or piano player when a terrible commotion broke out. A mouse! Oh, do something, Clive! The soprano leaped onto a chair and the accompanist fled to the corner. Frightened, Maurice raced out of the room. The little mouse scurried along the corridors and climbed the stairs. He slipped beneath fabrics and over boxes and bundles of rope. Finally, he found himself on the dark stage and he fell over the edge into the orchestra pit. Fortunately, right below was a large kettle drum which softened his fall. What a scary house, the mouse thought. This instrument is like a giant trampoline. Oh, I feel dizzy in my head and my tummy is churning. I need a nap. 
The exhausted mouse soon found a place to hide inside a shiny French horn. Its curvy pipes were the perfect spot to curl up to for a rest. He slept so heavily that he was completely unaware of the musicians taking their seats and people filling the auditorium. The opera performance was about to start. The mouse's sweet dreams finally got interrupted when the musicians started to tune up their instruments. As the French hornist lifted his horn to his lips, Maurice dared not budge. He held on to the instrument's slippery walls as best as he could. What an awful sound, the hornist complained. What on earth is wrong with my instrument? The harder and harder the musician blew, the redder and redder his face grew. Eventually, Maurice lost his grip. With a loud toot, he shot through the air like a rocket, heading straight into the audience. Now the mouse was the center of attention inside the opera hall. The audience gasped, leaping up as this little creature scuttled along the backs of chairs. The curtain was lifted, and the great diva stepped to the edge of the stage. Catch it! The soprano shrieked. I will not sing a note until the mouse is gone! It is following me everywhere today! The caretaker rushed onto the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, he called, please remain in your seats for a moment. If everyone does not calm down, we cannot catch the mouse and start the performance. A little boy sat with his dad in the middle of the audience. He had been to the opera before, but this was the funniest performance he had ever seen. He was not at all frightened of the tiny thing dashing around the room. After all, he had two pet mice at home. This mouse is quicker than mine, the boy marveled. He reached an arm toward the frantic fugitive, or the crazed runaway. Grateful, Maurice darted along the outstretched arm and straight into the boy's pocket. The boy quickly placed his handkerchief in his pocket to protect the mouse. No one else seemed to see what had happened. The troublemaker has left the room, someone announced, and the show finally started. Maurice was safe inside the boy's pocket. Gradually, the mouse calmed down, and then he climbed up to take a peek at the opera performance. Amazing, Maurice thought. A grand set had been built on stage. Rose vines ran around a castle's walls, and a tower was lit by a moon. And the costumes! Oh, now Maurice knew where all those beautiful fabrics and ornaments in the wardrobe room ended up. But best of all was the lovely music. The singers mastered their parts with thrilling virtuosity or skill. Even the star soprano looked fearless now that the little mouse was nowhere in sight. The orchestra soared, all the musicians playing brilliantly under the precise guidance of the conductor and his baton. The French horn sounded clear and deep now that Maurice was no longer blocking its tubing. After tonight, the little mouse would have quite a story to tell the others at home. Caretaker Carrington, who loved animals, had noticed where the mouse had ended up. As the boy and his father were leaving, Carrington approached them, carrying a small cage. Why don't we put the mouse in here? The caretaker said softly, smiling. I promise you, I will make sure this little trickster gets home. The boy eyed Carrington suspiciously, wondering whether this stranger could be trusted. He has a friendly look in his eyes, the boy thought. I believe the mouse will be safe. So at last, the boy nodded and took the cage. Why are there spangles and shiny fabric inside the cage? The boy wondered. And half a chocolate pastry. I took a tour around the opera house with this little mouse, the caretaker explained. He likes things that are shiny and sweet. Maurice happily slipped into the cage. His expedition or journey to the opera had been a success. On top of everything else, he had made two new friends. Maurice waved his long tail to bid goodbye to the smiling little boy as Carrington started across the lawn with the cage. Maurice crouched in the cage, thinking about everything he had experienced. I wonder if the others will believe that a little mouse like me can cause a big commotion in a huge opera house, 
Maurice thought. At least they will be pleased when they see what I've brought back to them. Half a chocolate pastry is enough for everyone. Carrington found the mossy rock and the rose bush. He put the little cage down beside them and opened its door. Maurice the mouse was home again.